waiting for red. Hey everybody, today is June 21st and this is the KCP community meeting. Uh, I will be moderating at least the first half of this, but at half past the hour, I will need to drop and uh, we're still talking then, Stefan will take over. The uh, community meeting issue 1320 is up. So if you have any topics that you'd like to chat about, please feel free to add them as comments. And uh, I think we will start with Sergius's question. So Sergius, I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, okay, thank you. So I'm working on a little admission plugin that is supposed to lock down internal KCP labels annotations, uh, which we only want to sort of like be modifiable by our own, own internal controllers. Obviously, and you know, just pass through um, any users that um, are having the group system masters, at least for now. There is a separate issue for that. Um, obviously, we want to have an allow list. That is a, a list of labels and annotations which are actually supposed to be set by end users or other controllers or other operators which are not in the system masters group. And my question is, <laughs> if you know of any effective way how to come up with that list. Um, Stefan suggested to iterate over the API package. I just gave it a little sweep just before the community call. However, I was apparently not <laughs> smart enough to filter these out efficiently. So if you have any tips or suggestions, that would be highly, um, yeah, I would be highly thankful. And um, the issue is 1138. Uh, I forgot to edit in the, in the comments here um, that I'm working on. So maybe a good place if you don't know them right off the bat here, or you have any suggestions, um, which should be allow listed, just add them here as comments. Another so general are, remark. Yep. Are, are you, so you're trying to find the list of labels and annotations that the system owns. Is that right? Um, actually, re the reverse. I like the admission plugin I'm implementing will protect everything except a list of labels and annotations. Would it be easier to do the opposite? Well, I'm like the, the way we sketched out the design is we're protecting everything uh, with the KCP dev domain. Okay. Except an allow list of okay. things that we know are supposed to be set by end users. While I do agree your suggestion is easier, like I believe the other one is just or safe. <laughs> yeah, got it. Right. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, again, like I, I don't expect that you answer all the things here. Just if you have any tips or like, um, you do know that oh, these labels are supposed to be meant to be set by uh, by external parties. Just just please enumerate them in the issue here. And we should document that like yeah above every label there should be something like a standard phrase or something. Yes, precisely. Like some, like probably a distinction uh, between internal labels or externally facing labels that are like even supposed to be an API like thing. And annotations, obviously. Okay. Any other comments on this one? All right. Uh, I saw a comment in the chat from Paul about David's work in progress demo on user home workspaces. Uh, I think it's about 20 minutes long. I um, made it through the first couple of minutes before um, going on vacation, but it looked very promising from what I was starting to see. So I'm excited. Um, do, do you hear me? Uh, sorry. Um, yeah, it, it was just a mistake. Uh, the twenty minutes. In fact, it's four minutes long. But 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 the recording. Uh, so you you had just sixteen minutes uh, black. So. <laughs> okay. Um, I, uh, probably you, you were one of the first uh, to to look at it before I, I update that on, on the YouTube. Got it. <laughs> By the way, uh, I'm still working on that. Uh, this was so prototype-ish, as I mentioned, because of course we have to. 
um, yeah, thank you. So cheers. We have to to uh, tackle and define more precisely what regards permissions and also uh, some some mechanism to gate uh, the fact that a user can see his home workspace automatically created because in in a number of cases it, it's very interesting. You you just have your you know you do WS home and then uh, it's not created and when you start using it it's created but obviously it doesn't fit all the cases. Uh, there might be cases where we want uh, a privileged service or component or something like that external based on KCP to gate user and just authorize user to have them home their home workspace created. So I have to tackle those type of things. Which is what I'm doing this week. So I mean, more serious and complete um, variant of, of that should should come. Very cool. Um, so we don't have anything else on the agenda. Um, if anybody's got anything, feel free to raise your hand or speak up. Otherwise, um, I'll probably move into the six or so incoming issues and in the milestone epics just to review those. All right, I'll start doing that. Um, please feel free to uh, raise your hand in Meet if you um, want to chat about something. So let me refresh this. So starting at the bottom. Um, so basically, just as a reminder, what we're trying to do here is not necessarily go into detail in anything in here. It's more about uh, trying to decide what milestone these issues belong to. And if we think something is uh important but not super high priority we can put it in tpd if we um think that it is so high priority that it's got to be done in the next nine days then we'll put it in 060 i think we're not going to put anything into 07 until we come back and do 07 planning so um this one looks like they tried to create and enter a workspace and got an error so um I don't think that this happens often enough or that it, um, well, if it's a reproducible 100%, we need to certainly um, cover this sooner. But um, and Steve, you looked at this a few days ago, and Stefan y'all were commenting. So what do you think in terms of milestone for this? TBD or 06? It's not you, right? It's not the regression, I think. Yeah, um, good TBD. I mean, I've never, never encountered this in my testing, but maybe it's a regression. I Stefan, what did you think this was waiting on? The informers inside of the yeah, is that uh, maybe a server? Customization and the virtual workspace all have informers in one way or the other. And the create call might be enough for removing the initializer, and then the user will see it. So it, could yeah, be it seems unlikely that, that we'd be able to create the object, have the controller pick it up, do all the initialization, remove its initializer, and still the authorizer in the API server hasn't caught up. But yeah. I Is guess. this an authorization issue or or even it's, like the no, 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 it's about thing. the it's about the resource. So they have yeah. different informers involved. Yeah, but, by the way, for workspaces, since you get them from the virtual workspace and the virtual workspace filters the results based on on what is in the informers uh, and are used by the authorizer, you know, local yeah, there's, there's even a, there's a CAD behind, which is not really used, but mm -hmm. so it's not that easy. I think the works, workspace CAD might play into that. It's not the virtual workspace yet, because we don't derive the discovery from that, I think. Anyway, so it's, it's something in, along those lines. So yeah, all right, I'll put TBD on it. Okay. Um, next up, Stefan, things not being fully qualified. Yeah, oh, I, right. I, I put I put the time bomb there. It's a security issue, at least a part of that, because I think yeah. the label is used for filtering. Yeah. 
Yeah. So yeah, yeah, sure. It's 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 that we have to change. Um, and the other thing, so I, I I tried to find out. Let me think. I tried to find a cluster workspace which is removed, and then remove from finalizers. I couldn't get the information easily. So that's why it's always easier to fully qualify them. And if we do that, um, we have precedence now that we use the workspace path colon and then object name. So like a file path, basically to a file of the mm -hmm. to a directory. So we can use the same thing here if we want to qualify those values. So I think we should plan to do this in 0.7. Yeah. 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 Uh, enhance audit logging. Uh, I think this is definitely not a 0 0.6. So TBD, and then we'll come back and put it in either 0 0.7 or not when we do 0 0.7 planning. Sounds good. It's just a response to like, we, yeah, we, we get like, why can't I get in questions? <laughs> yeah. And it's hard to answer them currently. All right. Another one from you, Sergio, is CA rotation in front proxy. That's a small one. I mean, it shouldn't be too hard, to be honest. Yeah. I'm still going to put it in TBD because just to reiterate, like, we're, we'll do planning for 0 0.7 eventually, uh, but we're not going to aggressively put stuff into 0 0.7 until we do planning. Oh, I realized for the the finalizers and labels one, I did put it into zero seven. I think like that's that's one that we need to do. <laughs> so, um, all right, this one I haven't seen. The port environment variables are missing. Okay, um, is this a I know Stefan, you said does cube add them or not? Um, yeah, this doesn't. Oh, okay. I think we probably should try and fix this on the sooner side since it breaks transparent in cluster config. What do y'all think? <laughs> Thanks, Stefan. Um, all right, I I'm wondering uh, since Joachim assigned this in terms of load, um, Joachim, is this something like what what is on your plate right now and I guess um, better to leave it for the next milestone. I will try, but um, yeah, that's fine. Uh, it's totally you know. fine. All right, I'm gonna put TB. Thank you. And I created this one, which is definitely TBD. So this is around um, not homework spaces that David's working on, but like inside of an org hierarchy, being able to share a workspace with other users, which which you can do today, but you need to ask an org admin or a, a root admin to do it. But then, I mean, uh, how does it relate really? I mean, what does really self-service mean as soon as we don't, we would not probably uh, enable by default any user to create workspaces in the in a top level org. I mean that's that would not be the, the, the approach in the future, which is why we have org workspaces. So does it make sense to have such sort of service option here? It could be similar to Airbag permissions, which you can delegate, like you can give other people permissions when they are lower than your own. Mm. So we could tweak our authorizer to allow creation of holds and bindings if you own those permissions and you are allowed to share or something like that. Yeah, I, I think at this point it's TBD. Um, I think that if someone has 
appropriate permissions inside of a, a like a my app workspace mm. in an org yeah we need a story around sharing and we'll get there but we don't mm. have to solve it today um yeah please go ahead guy we're um happily taking uh folks with topics so if you want to chat about storage pvs let's do it okay hey um so the the question we we have uh, um in our recent discussions was um was as follows so we um so pvcs will um um so a user will create a pvc um like regardless of, of kcp at this right but i create a pvc and um and it doesn't really care about the pv so the pv is more of a system uh, administrative um component of course but um the question that we have about the pv itself that um if if we let the user create the pvc with deployments or whatever is the workload in kcp and then we sync it uh, to a cluster uh, then that cluster will generate a PV, a PV for that, right? So there's the provider there. And uh, we need to capture some information back into KCP for that. And the reason for that, for that is we want to handle the case where that cluster goes off um, and we can recover by reconnecting to that storage. And um, uh, we are not really sure. We're, we're trying to go, you know, in, in several directions there, whether we, we need to um you know so pick up the information um from the pv and just put it into the pvc or yeah stefan sorry yeah. yeah this sounds familiar to a discussion i had with andy earlier today we also want pods for visibility probably but we don't need them updated as in cube like not every second or something like that so and maybe not with all information. So maybe we have to think about mirroring objects back into KCP, but projected so simplified without information we don't need. But also maybe enhance the sort of information we want to, to, to carry in KCP. That sounds mm -hmm. related. Yeah, I guess. I mean, in, in the case of stores, the reason for it is not just visibility, it's also for recoverability because the, that that information will will serve us as the you know the connection information right if we so, so it's, it's a logical view of the downstream object basically yes yes but so there's cases where it doesn't make sense to just take this information as is we might need some um something on the cluster itself to um to provide us you know like a plugin or something that will decide what information makes sense to uh, push up right um but in other cases it does make sense just to have um um the information from the pv reflected back um but there are, there is some transformation needed <clears throat> i think like you mentioned um, and um yeah the reason for that transformations might be that um it it might relate to locations right so if i um so if i have a location if i want to sync that pvc now to a different location i, I really have to do something different uh, I, I need to be able to uh, copy that volume between locations before i can really connect to that um, pv from another cluster in another location right um, so so there's more process around it but I think that the initial thing is just that we want the information captured in in KCP for uh, for syncing back to another cluster. I think yes, that's yes. that's clear that we need that. How yeah. we implement that? So what is coming? We don't have to discuss it now uh, deeply here, but transformations will come eventually. So there's a PR from David, and maybe it's worth to to meet and go into detail of your use case and see how that matches, whether it fits as a solution. Is it the transformations going downstream or also? Uh... At the moment, it's more about downstream, downstream. but the upstream okay. topic will come. So maybe we need a design session. 
whiteboard session okay. and just think about it. Okay. Uh, and, you, mm -hmm. Yeah. If you want to have my and David's brain, just invite us. Yes. Would be interesting, I think. Okay. Okay. So yeah, because I mean, yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah, many transformations. I mean, the, the the transformation that are coming allow modifying uh, upstream or downstream. I mean, in in both directions. Obviously, the use cases we have now are more, you know, modifying the upstream object uh, as it should be viewed by the downstream sinker but it can also modify uh, some objects that are you know for example it also modifies the status that it that is brought back uh, from from downstream to upstream so i mean technically it can also it can work both both directions so you okay. could preserve certain fields right if you have some id identifier you want to preserve some label annotation whatever Yes, right. this yes, could right. work like that, I guess. That's a bit some. That's something we already do somehow. Um, when uh, you preserve the status of the of the um, sinker related view, because you don't want uh, to override the status on the main object. So in some cases, you you get the information from the upstream object for what is uh, from the spec, but you preserve the status that. Uh, initially came from downstream. So, I mean, mm -hmm. we can implement whatever logic we want here to mix both. Okay, sounds good. I, I do have uh, one question I still want to um, you know, get your take about. So, the, I, I really want to just get that flow, um, you know, e even if not completely uh, final design for it, but just getting that flow working um, for, for a quick, you know, showcase uh, and i i was wondering i i do need to run um some collection so so something similar to pushing up information and i was thinking about using some uh pushing that in an annotation but then it, on the pvc right basically on on the user um uh the user entity but i was wondering if that would make sense at this point right if i just want to push an annotation back from the cluster um, um, up to KCP? Is that uh, um, something that might work for, for syncing back data on, on a related You, you just entity? need something downstream which sets the value, right? If you have that, you could do that, yes. But typically, it's just the status, we, we right? Don't, we, we don't sync them up, right? That's true. Mm -hmm. Well, it, I don't know. Is there any mechanism that that is used today that I can look for to send up it's, information like that? It's not generic, so we have to build something. Probably. Yeah, but that that would be as as Stefan said, that would be interesting to have a brainstorming, maybe meeting or session about uh, transformations and I mean the upcoming transformations on that because the the an underlying idea is to maintain. Um, a view of of the object as it is viewed and managed by each sinker. So, and this is this would be, you know, carried by annotations, but which are not, you know, aimed to be seen by end users on the main object. So, I mean, I think at least what you are saying is is crossing a bit uh, what is what has been done in this work, and it should be interesting to discuss that in more detail. I think. Okay. Okay. Thanks. I'll set up a meeting to follow up. Great. Thank you. All right. Um, so I'm going to move on to milestone epics. And I guess we'll start from the bottom up. So Consume compute VTMC in a different workspace. Um, so we are still working on the placement API and implementation, I take it. Stefan, do you have any updates on this? Yeah, API PR has merged and Joan opened the WIP PR for the controller today, I think. Okay. So this this progress looks all fine, I think. Good. Uh, 
multi-workspace controller development, I need to check in with um, Fabian and Nick and Barsha on some of this and see if we can get some things moving forward. I know that there's some open PRs and things that need review. So um, the controller runtime fork is still functional. Fabian's been working on trying to reduce the uh, need to have a fork at all, uh, either totally or very minimally. So um, expect some updates in the next couple of days there. Um, if we don't get all of the listers, clients, and informers done, um, I don't think it's the end of the world. Like We're still in the same state that we've been in. But I would like to try and refocus some of my time to helping get those closed out sooner rather than later. Uh, next up is quota. I have it working for built-in types. I have it working for CRDs in workspaces. I have an implementation that works against bound APIs through API bindings, but um, after talking with Stefan this morning, I'm going to tweak how that's implemented so it's less resource intensive. I don't have quota for cluster scoped resources, and we haven't really solved quota for pods like compute uh, limits and requests on CPU and memory, but we've got some ideas for how to mm -hmm. deal with that. So um, I'm going to try and get where I am today cleaned up and merged after it gets reviewed one more time, and then go on to tackling cluster scoped and pods. Um, at this point, given that I need to drop in a couple minutes, Stefan, can I turn this over to you to um, finish this out so I can head off to this other meeting that I've got to run to? Yes, let me take over one second. Okay. Thank you. It's good to see everybody. I'll see you next time. Okay, it's shared, I think. Uh, next one, David. Yeah, so this one, uh, let me look at the items. So, yeah, mainly the, 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 the various items mentioned here. Uh, the first ones are either already done uh, or uh, in process, in progress, mainly, you know, validated in terms of how to do it. Apart from the, the the points I mentioned just previously, uh, permissions and the gating of of the automatic creation of home workspaces, and then obviously I have to also the clean plugin support has been you know explored and and started implemented um, in parallel to validate the rest, and now uh, mainly after what I've been speaking already. Um, what is remaining is tests and entry and tests. So Thank you. Seems to be weird. Seems that we are good. That's cool. Next one, cluster workspace types. Steve. We, so the last bits that are left here is accessing the content of the workspace while it's initializing through the proxy. I imagine that'll be today or tomorrow. Um, after that, I think we should have the uh, API binding initializer added as a service. That should be fairly straightforward. Um, but yeah, I think this still seems reasonable for the next week. The stuff with child and parent types i think we can put off until later yeah i might contribute a pr let's see when i find time but yes this is not critical but we have to do it it breaks api so for better we need that cool next one api export permission on bindings sean is here <laughs> Excuse me. Um, sorry about that. I coughed. Uh, so yeah, um, I have a PR up. 
uh, that should be doing um, the acceptance of permission claims by bindings, as well as uh, adding permission claims to the export. Um, and this, so it should be taken care of 12.21 and 12.22, at least the initial versions of these. Obviously, we need to come back and make it more granular, but um, the initial PR, uh, I think, is working and is doing the filtering based on labels and has the controller that we talked about. So uh, I think I need some reviews on it, and I think it was failing some one of the tests. So if I could get a couple of reviews, and then if I could, uh, I can get into the test. And if somebody reviewed it and I haven't looked at it yet, I also haven't made my way over to the PR to look at it yet. So I apologize if everything's there. So I think this should be, I think the initial ask for 0 0.6 should be doable within this week. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Next one on the list, sharding. Not sure what you put on the list here. The PRs up. Uh, there's even a CI job part of that. It's not green, but it was green locally, so I think we're not too far. And you have seen the storm of PRs, which I moved out of that one. Most have merged, so a couple are still open. So this one will become much, much smaller, hopefully, within the next days. And polynomial, Lukash, is he here? I don't think. So he has watched cache mostly working. That's what I understood. There's just some open issue, but it's working. So we get watch cache finally, which means that label-based filtering will be not as bad as it's now. Um, yeah, and this topic here, I want to start these days. We will need, and we want to do that in our own controllers first. We need a second informer with a second client maybe merged into one con uh, one informer interface but in the background there are different clients working so i want to prototype that and this is basically the last item on the list here this topic is not about really the sharding steps so when we have done those informer bits then we can go to two shards and this will be next milestone All right, and then we have Mike's PNF topic. Is Mike here? Yes. Mike. If you are speaking, we cannot hear. What I'm not sure he's he's listening. So he, he asked some questions in chat. So he's on that. That's what was my take at least. Uh, looking into the code, how to make quality and fairness usable per workspace, basically. And yeah, that's it. I think all our ethics. Um, is there anything? So if there's a topic where you think you are blocked. Please speak up. I think we have a bit more than a week now until next week, mid of next week or something when the deadline is. So please speak up. And if you need reviews, ask for it actively. So it's totally fine to ask. Even if people ignore it, everybody is busy. So keep asking, keep nagging. That's all, all cool. Um, and I think then we are finished with the topic. So we still have some minutes. If there's another topic, anything you want to discuss? Now it's your chance. Pascal, no topic, then I would say everybody gets 23 minutes back. Thank you, everybody, and see you next week. Thank you. See you, thank you.